evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Amy Burkett. Check that label inside the collar of your cotton shirt. Chances are it doesn't say made in the USA, even though the cotton it's made from was probably grown in the USA. Now, cotton farmers here in the Carolinas are trying to change that, partnering with nearby textile companies to produce garments like this one that are truly homegrown. Our story is part of a new series on Carolina Impact we're calling Remade in the Carolinas, how local textile towns are bouncing back after years of mills closing down and jobs moving. Tonight, Carolina Impact's Jeff Saunier takes us to Stanley County and the cotton fields just outside of the town of Albemarle. Yeah, you know, with all the struggles that Carolina cotton mills have been through over the past couple of years, you'd figure Carolina cotton farmers would be struggling too, but actually it's just the opposite. The farmers say that much like this cotton field we're standing in right now, their business is actually, you know, growing. If you don't enjoy it, it's not in your blood. This is hard work. Farmer Butch Brooks grows his cotton on 100-year-old family fields. He picks it from behind the wheel of a half-million-dollar harvester. So yeah, growing cotton and picking cotton isn't just cotton picking hard. Like I said, I ain't gonna pick no more cotton. It's also cotton picking expensive. Well, I think it's great. It just we're blessed to be able to grow a crop like this. But this crop of cotton here at Sunnybrook Farm in Stanley County, these 5,000 pound cotton bales rolling from the back of that big harvester, well, it's not just any cotton. Experts say this is the good stuff. So when you say good cotton, what are we talking about? Well, with good cotton, take, a, take this right here for an example. As you can see from this cotton plant here, you can see the nice pure white into, into the cotton lint itself. Uh, that is that denotes the high quality. Uh, textiles want this quality cotton for expensive garments, uh, for high quality clothing. Problem is, there aren't many big textile companies left here in Stanley County. The mill buildings are still here, but the jobs are long gone, not like the old days. Time was when cotton was king of the coastal plain, but it was... When cotton crops didn't travel very far at all, from the field to the factory. We actually sold cotton to Wiscasset Mills here in Albemarle, seven miles down the road. You know, so it went from the field behind the gin to here, straight to the, the manufacturer, and then, you know, they're gone. There's no spinning mills in my county. There's very few within 50 miles of me anymore. Um, so all that has changed. Wes Morgan runs the Rolling Hills Cotton Gin. The local cotton growers have been bringing all those 5,000 pound bales they harvest for the past 21 years. Morgan shows us how the gin pretty much does the rest. It's all automated and computerized, and man, is it loud. These huge machines separate and clean the cotton fiber tons at a time. The leftover cotton seed sells as feed for cattle, and the gin repacks the cotton itself this time into smaller bales, barcoded and ready for sale. Yes, uh, until we get all the fiber, you know, seeds removed from fiber, we get the fiber graded, uh, how long, how strong, how white, color, trash, all that, get it into a bale, get it into a warehouse. Until we get all that done, the farmer can't get paid. But if most of the cotton mills are gone now, then who are the cotton buyers? Well, turns out the majority of this Carolina cotton goes to the same place those Carolina jobs went, overseas. This area of North Carolina is the center of cotton in the world at one time, basically. People wanted to be able to go to the store and buy you know, a shirt made in the United States. Well, right now, there's almost none of that. Do we get that again? Do we have something completely made in the Carolinas? When NAFTA hit, they basically said textiles in this country are dead. You either go overseas or you go out of business. But Eric Henry and his textile business had a different idea, something he calls dirt to shirt. There's more to a t-shirt than just the cost of a t-shirt, where it's made, how it's made, the impact it has on the people, impact it has on the planet, i.e. we grow cotton here, we can make apparel here. Henry modernized his t-shirt factory here in Burlington with new equipment. 
turning out shirts labeled Cotton in the Carolinas. The cotton comes from those same growers and ginners in Stanley County we showed you earlier. The shirts are cut and sewn at this factory in Greensboro. Then boxed up and sent to Burlington for dyeing and printing. The shirts even have special color-coded threads in the hem and the sleeves, so you can track back your shirt to the very beginning. If you take those two colors and go to a website, where W-H-E-R-E, yourclothing.com, mm -hmm. you put in these two colors, a map pops up, and from that map, I will introduce you to the farmer, the jenner, the spinner, the knitter, the finisher, the cut, sew, and TS designs. And when I say introduce, I give you a picture, I give you a phone number, I give you a physical address, I give you a... We make our supply chain completely transparent all the way back to the farmer. That's not necessary, but people kind of want that, don't they? I mean, people like to be able to see that. Well, it's... It, back to what I said about what's happening with food. People know where the food comes yeah. from, and it supports people in the state in which they live in. And the group known as Cotton in the Carolinas says eventually that so-called dirt to shirt program that they're working on now. Well, it's not going to put the cheap overseas shirt makers out of business, but it is creating a whole new business. We have had great cotton in the state for a long time. And uh, all we're doing is reconnecting that cotton to jobs and textiles back in our state. Grown and sewn here in North Carolina. Amy? Thanks so much, Jeff. Apparently more